In the following VSM modules, you'll learn how to practically create value stream maps. Not just an overview of the theory, but a real example to work through. In this module, we'll develop on the learnings from the Understand Value Stream Mapping module to start learning how to apply it. Remember, it's not good enough to just understand the concepts and tools. You need to learn how to apply them. The first step of value stream mapping involves defining the scope. What this means is deciding what we want to include in our VSM and what we don't. It is near impossible and inefficient to map every single process for every different product variation and every product combination. Quite simply, it's just too much work. Let's first narrow our scope to ensure we're focusing on the product type that needs to be improved the most. And we can do this by analyzing data about your business and system to find what we should include within the scope. Just to reiterate, this doesn't mean we're leaving a huge part of the processes out and only looking at a small part of the system. We still want to map the main system and sequence of processes from start to finish. We just want to focus on one particular product family. For example, imagine if your company produces 50 different product variations, which is often the case. If we were to map the intricacies of every single variation and the unique product flow of every one, we would spend months and likely burn out. Remember, continuous improvement is about small steps and gradual progress leads to perfection. A good place to start is what is called a product family matrix. It shows what products follow what steps, so you can group products and decide what to map. In this example, a company makes eight main products. Products A, B, C, E and G follow the same process steps and make up roughly 70% of all production volume. So it suggests the scope of the value stream map is for those products. This means when mapping the value stream, steps 1, 2, 3, 6 and 7 will be mapped and steps 4 and 5 won't be mapped. There is no exact way to do this. You may already have in mind what product family or product you want to map. The key thing is to agree as a team what is within scope and the boundaries that are within your team's control. This ensures that all suggested improvements can be acted upon and you don't waste time on things that are out of your control. And this is not to say that you should narrow the scope onto a single department. You just need to be realistic about what you can control and influence. Some companies that are very experienced with their lean journey may actually decide their boundaries need to be widened to map their supplier processes as well. Other things you may find are that one product type has extremely low demand and perhaps in the future could be discontinued from the product line. In that case, there is little to no point in mapping that process as future improvements may not be made. Other insight could signify that one product has a much larger and longer lead time when compared to similar products and data signifies that customers are very lead time sensitive. That may well suggest that the value stream map for that product would be a good one to start with. The key thing here is to question what the aim of the mapping is. What are the unknowns that you want to know and where do you think you can make a significant change? Wherever possible, we suggest looking at the facts and making a data-driven decision for what product or product family to map. But in a lot of cases, it will be obvious to the team where to start and end the map. It's really that simple. That is the first part of the VSM process, understanding the scope of the map. Make sure you do this to avoid confusion later in time and I'd suggest picking one product type that everyone is familiar with to refer back to. By the end of the scoping exercise, you and the team will have a concrete understanding of what processes to map and what product family or product is being mapped. To carry out this exercise, you may well need to visit the Gemba 
observe the processes and speak with the team members or operators to gather facts and data. Remember, we want value stream maps to really show what happens and not what is supposed to happen. And the best way to find this out is to visit the Gemba.